With 3D printing, there can be a steep learning curve. The last thing you need is more problems caused by mistreated filament. In this video, I'll show you how to look after your filament so that you have one less thing to think about on your 3D printing journey. A quick look through any 3D printing Facebook groups or subreddits will show you a whole host of opinions on how you should look after your filament and indeed whether you even need to worry about it at all. The reason why there are so many different opinions is that we're a worldwide community. People live in very different environments and use filament for different purposes. What I'm going to show you is the best real world methods I have found for keeping your filament in the best possible condition no matter where you live. I'm not going to try and convince you that you're doing it wrong if you have great results without using any of these methods. If you're happy, great, you do you. However, my methods allow me to keep my filament consistent. That is always in the same condition or as close to it as possible all the way through its life. Doing this ensures that your filament will give you consistent results and you won't be questioning your filament anytime you have an issue with a print. The good news is that keeping your filament in good condition doesn't have to be expensive. Any quality 3D printer filament will be supplied in a vacuum sealed bag that also contains some form of desiccant. If any filament you've bought hasn't been supplied like this, then you might want to consider buying something that is next time. If we assume that you don't live in a hermetically sealed environment, then from the moment you break this vacuum seal, you need to consider what your filament is interacting with. Although dirt and dust can cause issues, the biggest problem I've found with filament that hasn't been looked after is moisture. Most filaments are hygroscopic. This means that they soak up and retain moisture. Why is moisture a problem? Well, in simple terms, any moisture that's contained within the filament will boil as it's heated to over 100 degrees as it passes through the nozzle while printing. This boiled water causes bubbles of steam within the material that then burst, causing imperfections in the look of your print, but they can also affect layer adhesion making prints weak and can cause stringing. There are also things happening at a molecular level which I don't pretend to fully understand, I've just experienced their effects. Some will tell you that PLA, the most popular 3D printer filament, isn't hygroscopic, but that opinion is rarely based on scientific fact. I'm not going to pretend that I'm suitably qualified to give you a definitive answer on this. You can do some googling yourself and read some studies and make up your own mind. My opinion is based not only on reading a lot of these studies, but also on my own experience. I find that the PLA that I have looked after prints much more consistently than any that has just been left out in my workshop. And this goes for pretty much all 3D printer filament that I've used to a greater or lesser extent. I live in the UK where we have quite high humidity and quite large temperature fluctuations throughout the year. It may be that I'm in the worst possible environment, but using these methods I've found a way of controlling a variable that can cause some headaches. So, if you want to look after your filament in the best possible way, what should you do? My preferred method for starting my filament's journey off in the right way is to actually start by drying it. But why would you need to dry a brand new filament? Well, during the manufacturing process, filament is actually submerged in water as a way to cool it after being extruded. Depending on the manufacturer, this filament is often not then dried before being wound onto a reel and sealed. It's also very possible that the reel that the filament has been wound onto also contains moisture too. I find this especially true if a cardboard reel has been used. I love that these reels are more environmentally friendly, but they can also soak up a lot of moisture from the environment. If you seal your filament and reel away while the actual reel contains moisture, then there's a good chance that some of this moisture will transfer to your filament. For me, therefore, drying brand new filament and its reel is something that I like to do, especially if the filament is known for being more hygroscopic. So what are the best methods for drying filament? Drying filament doesn't have to be an expensive process. All you basically need is heat and airflow. How much of each of these is difficult to say definitively without experimentation, but the most obvious way of achieving most of these targets is with an oven. Electric oven that is not a gas oven. A gas oven can easily overshoot the requested temperature and turn your filament into a melted mess. Less accurate electric ovens can also do the same, and I wouldn't advise using any oven that you're also going to cook food in. That's because hot plastics release VOCs, which are volatile organic compounds. And Breathing or ingesting these is not advised. Buying a separate electric oven just to dry filament is rarely a cost-effective solution, so if you don't have a spare one lying around, there are better options. Whilst many say that food dehydrators work well for drying filament, personally I've found the best success with purpose-made filament dryers. I have a number of different filament dryers now, and my personal favourites are two models from iBoss. I have both their Cyclops and the soon-to-be-released Polyphemus, which you can now pre-order. 
Both of these models can dry two reels of filament at a time and use a PTC heater and fan for heating. The Cyclops gives you the option to set drying temperatures all the way up to 70 degrees C and a drying time of up to 24 hours, and the Polyphemus gives you even more. With the Polyphemus you can select between multiple different filament profiles which are all customizable. The one thing that it does that I haven't seen from any other filament dryer on the market is to actually rotate your filament while it's drying. Obviously you don't do this while you're printing with the filament, but the Polyphemus is a great filament dryer if it's within your budget. Check out the links in the description for special deals that iBoss have given us, as they're well worth a look. Controlling the temperature and drying time are the most important features on a filament dryer, but that moist air also needs to be let out. If you don't want to buy one of these iBoss models, then make sure whatever you do get has variable temperature control, some way to move the hot air around, and a way to let the moist air out. Now that we've dried our filament in a purpose-made filament dryer, we know it's as dry as it can be, but it's important not to undo all of that good work by letting the moisture back in. If you don't plan on printing with your filament straight away, then it's best to isolate it from atmospheric air by sealing it in an airtight container. A few filament dryers have closable air vents, which goes a long way to stopping moisture ingress. However, the cheapest and easiest method I've found is to use vacuum storage bags. These particular ones are also from Ibis. You can use closed vacuum storage bags, which I did for a while, but they were easily punctured, which makes them useless. The iBoss bags also come with a very efficient USB powered vacuum pump, which does all of the hard work for you. It's also a good idea to pop a little desiccant in that bag too. That way, if you do get any kind of leak, this will take the hit by soaking up as much as it can before your filament's affected. Another option is placing multiple rolls of filament in a large box and sealing it closed again with some desiccant inside. There are some other inventive solutions out there, but the basics are that you want the air around your filament to be dry and you don't want to let in any new potentially damp air. But what if you want to print with your filament straight away? The iBoss filament dryers, along with other models like the Sunlu S4 and this new model from Gratkit, have filament exit holes so that you can feed the filament out while you're drying. They also have rollers to allow the filament reel to spin while the printer's extruder pulls on the filament. If you don't want to print with your filament inside a dryer, then you can just take it out and print with it on your standard filament holder. Just bear in mind that any time that your filament is exposed to atmospheric air, it could be absorbing moisture. If you do do this, personally I'd plan to dry it again once you're done. Once you have a filament dryer, you'll be able to dry any suspect filament at any stage of the process, and in theory return it to the condition it was in when you first started using it. If you want to dry store your filament and print with it at the same time, then you can use something like this filament dry box. This is a filament dryer that I designed, and all of the 3D printed files are free. This dry box contains a large desiccant pack for keeping the moisture level low, and minimal holes that allow the filament to smoothly feed out, whilst keeping the amount of air that can come in to an absolute minimum. If you want to learn more about this dry box and get those free files, check out the video up here. If you're not convinced by the benefits of drying filament, and want to try it out for yourself using things you already own, then check out this video down here. Don't forget to hit subscribe, and thanks for watching.